So in my previous videos, I've given you guys basically how to play Akron, which is in the guide. And then I've given you how to play the team, which is in the previous video talking about a million damage or reaching a million damage is actually pretty easy. But a lot of you had questions about what I'm doing, the light cone, if, if I'm using my signature versus good night, sleep well, what's the difference? Or if I have this character, how do I do this? I don't have silver, so how do I do this? All of that is super easy. And I think you guys are overcomplicating the crap out of it. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over basically how to team build, or at least my idea, my thought process on how I team build for not only Acheron, but anything in the game and teach you guys exactly what it is that I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and then help you understand so that I, guys, I don't mind when y'all ask me questions on like what you should do or advice or anything like that, but I really want to cultivate an audience. I really want to cultivate you guys, like get your brain juices flowing so that you understand the game. If you understand the game and you think about the game on a ascended level, if you will, a lot of what I say or do, or a lot of the things that I come up with, my cooks, my hot takes, if you will, those become normal to you. And then it becomes way more natural and building an Acheron team, super easy. Some of the comments that I got in the last video were basically saying like, oh, well, if you don't have Swan and Silver, if you don't have Silver and Pela, you might as well just not even have Acheron. You might as well not even build Acheron because those are the only characters that work with it, which is completely false. Just today, which you guys can see it's nighttime. Shout out to the one that was in the stream, by the way. I showed Mello, which is someone who comes to the stream. Mello watches the videos all the time, how to perform with Gwenaithen and Pela, because that was the only things that were available to their account for Acheron, as well as Fire MC. And I still managed to get a zero to one cycle with said team. So it, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. There's no like, you have to use this thing. Like, no, very clear, very cut. If you understand how the game works, how the character works, and then the other characters that help that character, i.e. Acheron, you could build whatever team you want. Like I, just, I we just did some stuff and I didn't even use her nihility boost. So I don't want to hear that excuse anymore. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Pop quiz. Do any of you remember this anime about an orphan who goes on this crazy magical adventure to accidentally decide the fate of the world called Wak Fu? Did you know they made an MMO called Dovis? Well, they just relaunched the game in 2024 on all mobile devices, now with over 15 original classes to choose from. Introducing Dofus Touch. With over 10,000 maps, quests, dungeons, and more to explore. Team up with your friends to engage in some ridiculously unique combat. Loot, craft, and earn your way to the top with more than 20 professions to master. And now, with the biggest world on mobile, you too can enjoy a true free-to-play experience without a single purchase. Just check out my Regal Griffin. If you act right now by joining the new English servers, Dofus Touch is offering a free exclusive shield skin to everyone who joins before April 10th. But act fast. Ian server is open to the public on April 3rd, and there's no telling how quickly these will fill up. Download now using the link in the description down below or by dialing 1-800-DOFUS-TOUCH. That's 1-800-DOFUS-TOUCH. Download it now or else. So what I want to show you guys now, uh, I guess we'll start with like the, the featured premier team. And this is live, by the way. So I don't want anyone to be like, oh, man, you you didn't do whatever. Nah, bro, I probably didn't do it. And that's OK. All right. Um, I just want to show you the implications behind the team, how you go about playing these teams, the different teams that have come uh, that come with Akron, right? Just a few of them, because I'm not going to go over all seven. That's a little bit different. Now, normally I would hit this guy with May and then I'll pop bolt. The problem with doing that is I have Kafka on the team. Kafka has a talent. Kafka's talent triggers applies shock. And then that's going to give me a stack. I don't want to spread my stacks on this team. I'm going to hit this guy. Kafka is going to do her shock. That's going to give me seven down there. And I am rocking. I'll just double check it here, but I'm pretty sure I'm rock, rocking good night sleep well. Now on this team in particular, normally what I would do, I know it's going to sound crazy when I say this. Normally I'm rocking resolutions. The reason I'm rocking resolutions is because with Kafka and Swan, your goal is to get stacks as fast as possible. With good night sleep well, you're not doing that. You're only getting one stack at a time, which puts you in the same situation that you would be if you weren't rocking Kafka and Swan, which kind of defeats the purpose a little bit there, but you still, I can still clean it up, right? My game plan here is to basically have resolutions trigger and then defense drop. And then that applies to everybody that helps everybody. So I can stack more defense drops with everyone on the team. And you see that he got the one anyway, which is why I didn't want him to get the one. So now I'm pretty much just stacking defense drops. I have my ultimate activated with May and I'm going to be able to apply this here and just kind of clean up the board a little bit. Now, these guys, unfortunately, they're not going to die just because they have the revive. That's just what they do. But I am able to kill the trotter. Killing the trotter is big right there because not only am I going to be able to get my uh, my first stack with Acheron, 
but I'm also going to be able to get Kafka. And so right here, there's two ways this normally plays out. One, Kafka just takes out this guy and I don't have to burn ult. Yeah, so he's gone. Kafka gets ult. Here, I typically don't have to burn ult, but if you're aiming for the zero cycle, sometimes you do have to burn ult. It really just depends on how your Kafka, uh, how strong your Kafka is, things like that. So I do a big chunk there and then DOT happens. And unfortunately, he does not go down. He's still alive and I have to deal with that. Um, and there's really nothing that I can think of right now that might be able to pull that off for me. I don't think Kafka is going to be Yeah, her shock isn't going to be enough here. So I'm not going to stress about this. I would typically have killed him with ult. I don't want to do that. I just want you guys to understand that it is possible to get that zero right there. That zero cycle is very clean when you do it. I just want to save my ultimate for uh, going into the next round with Yang Ching. So it's it's not a big deal, right? We're going to clean him up here with the skill. Boom, 46K, easy, easy, lemon squeezy. He's going to come out. I want him to summon swords. Actually, you know what? Can I break him here? I think we might be able to break him here. Let's find out. He gets the stacks there, which are nice. I should have done that in reverse. I should have done Kafka so she could abuse the DOT. But I think we can take him out. Yeah, so I can I can crack him right here and now. Cracking Yang Ching early is good because now I don't have to deal with swords as quickly as he would have pulled them out. It looks like May is coming up after this, so I can't really use my defense down just yet. But you see that I, I burned through 50% of his HP already. He's already at 33%. He gets delayed again. So I get to activate this and then Akron's going to get another stack. Now, if I had resolutions, this would be my nine and then I'd be able to take him out. And then that would have given me um, the ultimate and he'd be dead. I would have like killed him before he got to do anything. And that would have been perfectly fine for me. But I'm just going to I'm going I'm to smack it out here now. Smack it. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I, it held for a little too long. I don't know why I did that, but you guys get where I'm going with that. This whole team is about getting your ultimate with Akron as fast as possible, as often as possible, which means you need to be utilizing how you're getting your stacks. If And obviously, this is like the premium team, right? I wanted to show off the premium team first just so that everyone understood they're different. Like the way that you play certain teams is going to be different compared to how I play, you know, like my standard team, right? The standard team being something like Pela and Silver. The goal is the same to get her uh, stacks as much as possible. But the way that you go about playing that is a little different. Like, for instance, if we use the Sparkle, Acheron, and then Silver and Halo, right? If we're using something like this, which is a little different here, then we can make that work. Okay, so now we're here with the Sparkle team, right? And so Sparkle, just like I showed you guys in a previous video, I'm doing the same thing. I'm lining up the shot. I'm making sure that everyone, everyone's going to be able to get their ultimates as often as possible. And with Sparkle, that's so much easier. Now this guy has nine. He hits Silver, which is awesome. They're dead. I just want to point that out there. I not and I don't even think I need to use Silver's ultimate right here. I kind of I've learned that I can hold on to Silver's ult because Acheron's going to clean them up anyway. And I can just use Silver's ultimate to go into wave two with Yang Ching, which I believe is what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to go for my skill here. Am I still using uh, good night sleep? Well, oh, my gosh, bro, I still Dude, guys, I'm supposed to be using my signature, but you know what? It's fine. We're using good night. I think this is a 900,000. I don't know if this is going to be a five or a, okay, 869. 869, not bad. Had I used Silver Wolf's ultimate right there, bro, that would have been a clean one mil. I just want y'all to know that, okay? It would have been a clean one mil, but I don't have to worry about that right now because, like I said, being where he is, I'm going to be able to go into the next one with everyone's ultimates lined up. Please don't heal Silver. Okay, thank you. I'm going to bring up Acheron. Acheron's going to get uh, six, five because we're using good night sleep. Well, she's going to get five, but this should hopefully this takes him out. Um, crit. I didn't crit. That's crazy. I feel like I don't want to accept that. So I'm not. I'm going to redo that. All right. So as long as I hit crit, you're dead. Hit crit. He has like one HP. No, I'm, I'm hitting this crit. I'm not allowing this. Nine forty nine. That's almost one K right there, bro. There we go. OK, 91 K on the horse. Horse is gone. Now I can play the game. All right. Do I have a uh, win set? I don't think I have win set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have quantum. So we're, we're safe to do this, right? I'm not going to jump up 25 percent. Now we can actually continue with what I'm trying to show you guys. The reason I want to do that is so I can launch into Yang Ching with uh, Silver Wolf's ultimate. 
you see that I have seven already in the event that I wasn't rocking good night sleep well and I was using my normal light cone, which uh, would have been my signature, I would have been able to get nine. But it's not a big deal because um, we can still make this work, right? Him having swords on the field is good for my damage overall. Excuse me. I think my Pala still has wins, so I'm I'm not using this Pala win set correctly at all right now. <laughs> I'm not doing it at all, but I don't want to get hit with swords. So we're going to clean the shop with swords right now. Get them all out of here. Is that one mil? Oh, my God. 132. <laughs> That's some nasty damage right there, my boy. That is some nasty damage. He didn't even need... He didn't need to have that happen to him. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, good stuff. GG's Yank Team. Get the fuck out of here. Going over this team is plain and simple. Okay, Sparkle is Sparkle. We we know how she is by now, right? You're going to bring her forward. You're going to bring Akron forward using Sparkle skills. Sparkle is going to be able to boost you up. I think I gained almost 100% extra crit damage. So this 230 or 20, oh, my bad, 169. Damn, I'm not even using my signature light cone, right? So I'm, I'm at 3,700, 72 crit rate, and then 169. So Sparkle is boosting that up to like 269 instead of 300 something. My crit rate is not reaching 100%. That's why you saw me missing a couple crits. And then my attack is not 4,200, which is what I have with my signature, I think. Let me just double check here. Yeah, with my signature, I have 4,200. And you see, that's a crazy difference, right? The attack difference just by changing light cones, it, it, it jumps up. And it's just because it's based like this is your base attack getting increased, right? So your base attack is being amplified by all of these multipliers. You see that I only dropped down by 200, a little less than 200 for my actual attack. But overall, I'm dropping down by about 500. So that's pretty dang big. But I'm showing you guys these things so that you understand how these teams operate in a little bit of a different way. But maybe let's go for something a little more free to play, right? Because I, I talked about it in the previous video where I showed you guys how the uh, Fire MC team works as well as the Gallagher team. And so ultimately what I want to explain to you guys is basically when you're team building, obviously I'm going to start with Akron. Now you have to start from the building process, okay? And I'm telling, I'm trying to teach everyone how to do this now. I guess maybe not everyone because everyone doesn't even know this, but my free to play players, a lot of my newer players that came from the PlayStation update version 1.6, I believe is what it is to now. Most of the community does not, we don't put any emphasis on this. Not we as in me, but we as in them put any emphasis on this because y'all hate when I say it, but literally hyper care. The reason is hyper carry. The reason is quite literally build three harmony characters, get a DPS, call it a day. That's why no one puts emphasis on team building and what these characters are doing for you. Because yeah, I could Powerpuff Girls the crap out of, of Acheron and still get the same, if not more damage because of how strong they are. But what I mean, when I say team building, you need to know how this character operates from the kit down. What does Acheron do from a, from a base level? Skill, ult, that's it. So you need, okay, did you pull the signature light cone? I need to understand how Mirage Fizzle works when I want to do these kind of things, if I want to open up with the technique, so on and so forth. What am I gaining from Mirage Fizzle? Extra 24% damage to enemies that are afflicted with Mirage Fizzle, as well as additional 24% ultimate damage, right? That's huge. That's a big deal. That's basically a quarter's worth of damage. What am I looking at from my talents? Do I want to max these out? I, I can't show you the differences in um the stuff anymore because uh, it's already maxed out. But point being is that what am I looking at here, right? How much will all type res go from eight level eight to level 10? I believe it goes up by 2%. So at level eight, it's 18% or something like that. And then at level 10, it's 20%. Or at level eight, it's 16%. And then it jumps up by 2% each time. I don't remember exactly. But same thing with skill, right? I know skill jumps up by 10%. So each of these are jumping up by 10%. Our ultimate, however, this is obviously the big one that you want to make sure you have. All these orange numbers, these jump up by a good grip. Okay, that 372 at level eight is not 372. This 300 at level eight is not 300. So you wanna make sure you know and understand those things. How does the talent work? How am I triggering the Crimson Knots or my debuffs to get Crimson Knots? That's your biggest thing. Stack up as many Crimson Knots as possible to get to nine. Make sure these debuffs are worthwhile. That's another big thing that you wanna talk about, right? And then my relics, again, going down to the base kit. I have a Zumo Gensei, which is the new planar ornament set. It increases the wares attack by 12%. Then when I enter the battle, as long as someone else is of the same path as Acheron, which is Nihility, she's going to get a free 12% crit rate. What does that mean? That means if my crit rate is already 72%, 
free 12%, I'm already at 84% crit rate for free. I did nothing. I didn't, all I did was put Silver Wolf or Payload on the team, right? Swan, Gwenaithen, Luka, anybody. Any of the Nihility characters for, for free, I gained 12%. I jumped from 70% to 80% crit rate. Then I have Pioneer, which is the four piece set. Not only am I doing 12% extra damage to anyone that's debuff, which as you play Acheron, everyone on the field gets debuffed. That's just your job, right? The team's job is to debuff everyone on the field. I get a 4% increase rate. So that took my 84% to now 86%. Then because of the way that Pioneer works, if I am fighting something with uh, two to three debuffs, Pioneer then triggers, right? It activates its trap card. You've activated my trap card. That's what happens with Pioneer. All of these buffs double. So my eight or 12, because they'll always have three, my 12% crit damage jumps up to 24% crit damage because it doubles. My 4% crit rate jumps up to 8%. So that took me from 72% to uh, 84%. And then the extra 8% jumped me up to 90%, right? 92%, something like that. So I'm at 92% crit rate before anything else applies. I had to double check my math. I'm right. <laughs> 92% crit rate is huge. Basically a 20% crit rate increase just from having her equipped. Not even, these aren't even built, right? No substats in mine. I mean, obviously they're built because I built them, but I'm saying when you're applying this, it's a free 20% crit rate. So if you have a crit rate body piece, which I go over, that goes from five to 32, you're at 37, right? 37 crit rate with just a body piece. And then you add the other stuff. Now you're at 57. Just by having these relics equipped, you are now at 57% crit rate before anything else happens. Her traces are all crit damage. Her light clone is crit damage. That's gonna help you get as high as a one to two ratio, if not higher, for your crit damage is as much as you can get. Yeah, you don't care about speed, so you're gonna have the attack boots. And if if in the event, this is ideal, ideally, because I've only seen one person do this, which I I, I wanna say is I wanna lose, but it might've been Zyax. I don't remember who has it. Someone has an ideal Acheron early, like in the creator experience server, someone has an ideal Acheron. 4,200 attack, 137 speed, they have 72% crit rate and they have like 180 something or 195% crit damage. Some ridiculous number like that. That is in the perfect world, the perfect Acheron. There is nothing that Acheron can't do. She should zero to one cycle everything on the board. That is the perfect Acheron, okay? You don't need speed, but in the event you happen to have all of those other stats checked out and then you also have 134, oh yeah, you're killing whatever you want. You're getting your ultimate every two to three, you get your ultimate three times in the first cycle if you play it correctly and then you get your ultimate twice every cycle after that. So it, it's a clean, perfect Acheron in the perfect world. I don't wanna tell you that you don't need speed, but it'd be nice if you had it. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Now that we've built out Acheron, right? We have Acheron, boom. I know that was long-winded, but again, you need to know how you're operating this team at a, at a base level. That's how I team build. That's how I'm thinking about stuff. That's how it's easier for me to pick out who goes where, because I could build a team. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. I could build a team right now with Acheron and Clara and make that bitch work. Just because I understand how these operate, who's doing what. Does, um, for those that don't know, I showed it in my guide just briefly. I, I threw it in there as a tidbit in case people would catch on to it. But Clara, she also has the whole like mark of whatever it is, something like that. Um, let me go see where it is. There it is, all marks of counter. Mark of counter, this is a debuff. It, it might not seem like it because it is what it is, but this applies the same way that taunt applies, where when you taunt someone with fire MC, that counts as a debuff. When you uh, when you trigger everybody with mark of counter, that counts as a debuff. Now, the tricky thing about this is that mark marks of counter has to go away before you do it again. So it's beneficial in Clara's case because she's way slower. So ideally it's gonna go away, but it's not beneficial if for whatever reason, they're just not striking Clara and getting rid of the mark. It is what it is. Anyhow, who's the next character that we're gonna be building on the team? I'm probably gonna go with Pela. Why am I gonna go with Pela, guys? Because Pela is, going to give me, not only will she give me resolutions, which hopefully if you have enough effect hit rate, everything Pela does has a chance to apply the defense reduction from ensnared. And you wanna keep this on as often as possible because it can go away if you miss it. Then after that, uh, Pela's skill is going to apply a debuff, right? Removes one buff and deals ice damage. This applies a debuff from her, is it an Adalon if I'm not mistaken? I think it's E2. I lied, it's E4. E4, if you have E4 Pela, which she is on the banner guys, so it's very possible to get an E4 Pela if you don't have one. When using this skill, there's a 100% base chance to reduce the target enemy's ice resistance. The actual effect does not matter. <laughs> it's the debuff that matters. When you're doing that with her skill, that applies the debuff so that if ensnared does not kick in, it's still fine for you, so you're, you're Gucci. Now her ultimate being level 10, this is a big one. 
40% defense reduction. In the event you have Adelons, you can jump this up to 42%. I personally don't feel like it's worth it, but you can make that happen, right? You can just max her out. This will be level 10 plus two. So then it'll turn out basically level 14. Um, if you want to do that, it's totally fine, right? Like it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to be able to do that. And I think most players are doing that anyway because of Pela but it is what it is. And then because of the way Pale is built, she gains her uh, ultimate basically every two turns, right? Or uh, every two two instances, two attacks, something like that, two skills, whatever it is because of her talent and a bunch of other stuff in her kit. So Pela overall, all around, Pela is very solid. And in my opinion, at first I thought it was Swan, right? I'm like, okay, Swan's the perfect per uh, partner for Akron. And I still do think Swan is a perfect partner, but I feel like Pela is right up there. Like there's no Swan over Pele anymore. I think they're both neck and neck when it comes to who I prefer on the Acheron team. And a lot of the times I just use both. Now getting down to the build of Pele, some things that are really cool about Pele will be the win set for Pele, right? This is something that not a lot of people have. I don't recommend it because farming for win set, especially if you're not, uh, you already don't have Jing Liu. Farming for win set is annoying. It's super, super lame, but the effect is really nice. It's basically anytime you use ultimate, which you're pretty much getting almost every single turn, she jumps forward by 25%, which basically can take you from being at the top or second of the next cycle to the top of the, uh, the end of the current cycle, right? And that could help you get just one more debuff, one more Crimson Knot on the enemy to then get a stack so that you can now ultimate before the end of that cycle and then clear the wave. You guys saw me do this in the previous video where I had Gallagher, I lined up my shot, and then I got the ultimate just at the nick of time, right? I lined it up so that I knew I was gonna get, uh, I needed four of the debuffs, right? I needed four Crimson Sacks or four uh, slashed dreams to, to guarantee it, and I did not have signature. So I could only get one for myself with Acheron and her turn had already passed. So I made sure that I lined up that shot, I looked at it correctly, and I was able to do that with Gallagher and Pela. So it's little stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm using Von Quack just because Von Quack's nice. It gives her the ERR, the 5%. And then she's also going to be able to advance floor by 40% when she jumps into battle. So this just helps it so that in the event your Pela is faster than everyone else, plus Von Quack, she's going to be able to drop that ultimate immediately. But when you're fighting Sanctus Moctis or the Sanctus dudes, I like to wait until he summons the other guys so that they also get the defense drop. But Akron's so strong, she's going to kill them anyway. It, it usually doesn't matter. Next up, who do I want? My third Nihilian unit is usually on Element. If it's not Silver, because most of you were told just to skip Silver because she's a bad character, not everybody wants Silver. Everyone's hunting for Silver now because, oh man, she's so valuable. Yeah, bro, I, I know. That's why I told you guys that. But regardless, um, and it wasn't even just me, right? Me and Smack. Like a lot of people were telling you guys like Silver is still valuable. And then you have other people like, man, you don't really need Silver. Just, just pull the Element. Pull the on Element character. Okay. <laughs> regardless. Let's build on element, okay? Swan is currently on element, so I would build for Swan. But let's say that you're going to get somebody like, um, you can still use Yangxing, actually. Let's go with Welt. Welt is a great character, but this changes how I want to play with Acheron. Why? Because Welt is not the type of character that's going to be applying debuffs every single time he does something. Even though his skill will do that, Welt's one of those characters where one of these two characters is going to be using skill, right? It's either going to be Welt or Pela. Now, Pela starts with skill, and then she can do basics after that and still get her ultimate. Welt, I want to use a lot of skills because I want to get his ultimate up as fast as possible. Why? Because Welt's ultimate is going to do what's called Imprison. So imprisoning, even if he doesn't break them, Imprison happens, and then it delays the frick out of them, okay? And it reduces their speed. This, in turn, gives you your sustained Welt. But Welt is a little trickier to build. My Welt is not up there. You see these stats are abysmal. I need a Welt that's doing damage. Why? Because he's using his skill, he's using his ultimate, and Welt does have some, some decent multipliers in his kit, right? 72% of whatever he's doing, this hits multiple times, the skill, by the way. Boom, 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 right? So if that's single target, that could be a lot of damage. You also have the ultimate doing 150% plus the delay. That's really big. Then when he hits an enemy that's already slowed, which Welt does on his own, he does an additional uh, stack of imaginary damage on top of that. So it's really nice. He debuffs the enemy when using his ultimate. So not only, even if he didn't have in prison, which counts as a debuff, he still does it from his bonus ability, which is retribution. So Welt just has a lot going for him that uh, it's it's just, you could use well. You don't have to pass Welt off. But now you get into the relic options, right? So when I'm looking at this from a, a DPS perspective, Pioneer is great because again, if Acheron is fulfilling these roles, so is Welt. That's a free 8% crit rate and a free 24% crit damage. 
but I still want Welt to be somewhat defend or somewhat supportive, which is why I gave him the broken keel. And you see that it should be active here. 34.6, it is active. So he's also going to be giving not only himself a 10% crit damage increase, but he's also giving everyone else on the team a crit damage increase. In particular, he's giving Akron an extra 10% damage, 10% uh, crit damage on top of everything else. So this helps with your Akron because again, we're not running speed boots, right? So now that I'm not running speed boots, this is going to help with Welt. So Welt's going to be able to reduce the enemy speed. He's going to be able to drop them down. And if you work this team in a way so that you line up your shots so that Welt is the one that breaks, well, now you can do something a little different, which is my personal favorite Welt, where you don't really care about the damage he's doing. You care about the speed at which he's doing it. So you sacrifice your attack or crit rate, I should say crit rate, crit damage for speed. You want to get Welt as fast as possible with enough bulk so that when he does get hit, he's not gonna die. And then you wanna stack up the break effect as high as possible. Why do you wanna do that? Because if you break with Welt on top of the ultimate, they go down two or three cycles. Like imprisonment is deadly. The entanglement's really good because quantum, right? And entanglement does the same thing because it has similar properties, if not the same exact properties, but they don't have the extra 40% attached to it, right? Silver doesn't have the extra 40% attached to her when she's entangling an enemy. He does. So whatever you did from the regular break effect formula, then you just stack another 40% on top of that and 10% uh, reduced speed. Yeah, they're not getting their turn back ever. So that's why it's really big for Welp to have something like that. And I don't have any Aelons on my Welp. So genuinely, I don't even know what he does for Aelons. I couldn't be able to, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you for Aelons on Welp. But point being is that that's where that goes. And so now that I have Welp as a sustain, uh, sustain slot, guess what I'm able to do? This fourth slot is now completely open. I have my two Nihility characters checked off. I'm good. I could add a healer. I could add another DPS character, sub DPS character for Acheron like Clara. I could add Fire MC to try and mitigate some of the damage and keep my stacks up. I could add Swan because she's on element. I could add May. I could add Kafka to speed up the process at which I take these enemies out. I could add Topaz who's going to increase uh, the crit damage that's happening or whatever, this is E1S1 stuff. I'm not gonna include Topaz. Don't worry about Topaz, all right, guys? Gwenaifen, Luca, Fushwin, Sparkle. A lot of people like Sparkle. Depart, um, Gallagher. This fourth slot is completely open, right? Now, a lot of people, you're gonna see a lot of people do this, though. Where, uh, where the frick is my, oh, there she is. A lot of people are gonna build out this team. Welts, May, Pela, and Acheron. Why? Because not only will Welt delay the crap out of them, like I just explained to you guys, but then May doubles down on that delay. So essentially, this becomes a team where you should never have to fight the enemy. Like this is, if anything, this is don't fight the enemy, the team, okay? I like this team a lot. I'm still working on the kinks for it, how I want to perfect it, how I want to play it. But ultimately, this team is disgusting. I love it. So that's how I go about building these teams out for, for Akron or anything, really. Like I just look at the kits and then I want to build out a team. And some of you guys are probably new. I know a lot of you come from that team, the top five teams or whatever which will get updated. There are new top five teams now. So don't fret about that. We're gonna we're gonna update that soon, but maybe later on this month, I, I will see. But point being is that when I'm building out my teams and I'm looking at these characters, a lot of what I'm doing here is basically looking at the kit and saying, how, how do I abuse this in the most abusable way possible while still keeping everyone else on the team doing a job, right? What does this character do for blank DPS? What does this character do for whatever? And I, I want to end this off on a more positive note than negative. This isn't me saying like, don't, uh, I don't even think I have a hyper carry on this team, right? Something like this, right? If this was hyper carry for whatever reason, like instead of silver, I guess I had mate or Ting Yoon. Ting Yoon's probably better here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ting Yoon's better. Let's say that I was rocking this, which is a solid team for Daniel. I'm not knocking this by any means. Everyone on this team is serving Daniel. So it's not like I'm saying that hyper carry doesn't serve the main DPS. What I'm saying in general is that I, they don't do anything else. Like they're, they're just there, right? Sparkle does no damage. Ting Yun does no damage. Bushwin does no damage. So it's literally just Daniel. The way that I build teams is a lot different than the way that other people, or maybe how I, I should say, how I look at teams a lot different than the way other people look at teams. But ultimately it is what it is, right? On this team, May can do damage because of break effect. She's doing passive damage all the time. Well can do damage because, well, we've already seen this. Pela, DPS Pela, Moon showed this off. DPS Pela is actually viable. You could build a DPS Pela or a sub DPS Pela. And then of course, Akron is cleaning up shop. But in this team, it's similar to how Daniel would be, right? 
Daniel's whole purpose is to get as many skill points used as possible so that he can max out his basic attack. This team serves that purpose. The same way that Acheron's whole thing is to get as many stacks as possible. This team serves that purpose. So at the end of the day, it really just comes down to how you're building your team. And again, this is just like, what did I show you guys? Three teams for Acheron? You can mix and match whatever you want it to. It's just as long as you know what you're looking for, you're good. If you don't want May on the team and you want uh, freaking, I don't know, Gwenaifen, right? Because you want to stack more defense opportunities or you want Swan because you just happen to have Swan. That's cool too. So now you have a rainbow build with Akron. You just have to play well, uh, Welts a lot differently or not really a lot differently. You have to play him smarter because Welt needs to be able to, to keep the team alive. How does Welt keep the team alive with no heals and no shields? Make it so that the enemy never gets a turn. And how you do that with your world is totally up to you. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. I Man, I'm giving y'all like, I, I told y'all, right? I said if I talked about this stuff in the guide, it would turn into its own video. What I have to say about these characters, how much I have to say about these characters, the team building aspects of it, where the game is going, all these things that I can finally talk about now that it's officially released. Oh my gosh, bro. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for it. Then the creator experience server, they're just dropping guides five days early. You know how mad I am about that? Uh. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and comment down below. Let me know what teams you're looking at to build with Acheron. And if any of the things that I showed you in these last few videos are something that you're willing to try out or have already been looking at to try out. I would love to see more people playing Akron. And again, I'm, I'm going to keep asking for it until I see it. Fire MC. Someone showed me Fire MC versus Sam. I need to see an Akron team using Fire MC versus Sam. I don't care if it's like all three five stars and then, you know, Fire MC is there. I just want to see it happen. And if it's able to be survived versus Sam or just blitz him out right. I would love that. E0S1, by the way, I'm real positive E2 could do it. I'm willing to accept E1. E1S1 minimum or maximum is what I'm looking for. Uh, E0S1 is what I'm, I'm capable of seeing. And then E0S0, I'm also fine with seeing that too, right? So minimum E0S0, maximum E1S1. That's what I like to see. Anyhow, yeah. Did I already say that? I can't say my usual outro is inappropriate for YouTube? I don't know. But if I did, then I did. If I didn't, smell you later.